All right, let's get started. Welcome to the 25th Annual Children's Water Festival. Thank you for participating over the past couple of months, and we really hope to be back in person at University of Dayton next year. Just a few quick reminders since we're on Zoom. The chat function is off, but you are welcome to ask questions in the Q&A function. And this celebration will be recorded and posted later on the festival page on YouTube. We'd like to take a minute to do a land acknowledgement. So we want to center ourselves. We're in the great Miami River watershed because everyone lives in a watershed. And to acknowledge this area as the traditional territory of the Mia Mia and Casa Saki uh, Osage and Shawnee peoples. I apologize thoroughly for those pronunciations. I'm doing my best out here. But it is good to recognize the people that came before and the people that protected these lands. And we want to continue to protect the land and the water and take care of it for many generations to come. some highlights over the past couple of months of all the wonderful fourth grade classes that participated in the Children's Water Festival. Thank you for bearing with our technical difficulties. It's always a fun adventure. But before we get to the highlights, we want to thank our sponsors. At the aquifer level is the wonderful City of Dayton Water Department, the multi-jurisdictional source water protection program. At the river level, we have Cargill. At the creek level, Hazen. Stream level, LexisNexis. And at the raindrop level, Miami Conservancy District, Pace Analytical, Waste Management, Stony Hollow Landfill, and Wood. Thank you all for being a part of this and helping bring the Children's Water Festival to all the fourth grade classes in the greater Dayton area. Thank you everyone on the planning committee for helping bring all of this to life. And we really hope to bring it to you back in person like we have been for 23 other years next year. So the highlights of the 2022 Children's Water Festival. We had 48 classes register for the festival. We delivered 46 activity boxes and we had seven learning stations, all about water, aquifers, watersheds, water infrastructure, life in water and on land, climate action, careers in water, and beyond. We had over 182 users with 860 page views on the festival website. We had 68 entries on the classroom leaderboard and 344 views of festival videos on YouTube. Great job, everybody. So here's just some pictures of some of the various classes participating in the H2O Olympics. Great job, St. Anthony. The water cycle in a bag. Those look really cool. I should have tried that one at home. And the watershed. Watershed work. <laughs> and now I would like to welcome Chris Rollins for some song and dance. Are we on? Welcome, Chris. Well, no welcome to you. Welcome. Oh, sorry. I have my old guy glasses still. I keep them up. And you know the worst thing about this? You get to be my age. Well, I finally found out when I was officially old because my wife and I were at, at, at dinner and I was going like this. And she said, on your head. I said, what? She said, your glasses are on your head. And, you know, two days later, the AARP bus was right up front. So yeah, you got your Buckeye yeah. golden card and everything. I know. Right. Well, I'm not very so I'm gonna, well, we, we will try. Okay. How are, how, are, how are you guys doing today? Oh my gosh, it is good to see you. Next year, like I said, hopefully we will be back in person doing stuff. And I will make sure I shower for that next year. Right now, you don't have to worry about that. So uh, we're going to do a song, which would be a good idea, right? We're going to do it. Let's do the beat. Let's start with the Beaver song. Eric, get in here. Eric, 
water. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Eric's helping helping his wife. You guys didn't know this last year. While all this stuff was going on, the water droplet got married. And uh, you know how cool is that? Yeah. They got clouded. And uh, yeah, oh. Eric, come in here. You're, you're singing with us. Everybody, everybody say hi, Eric. Hello. Oh, wait a minute. You gotta say and I to our little drop. Maybe you can, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Willie's dancing around. So we're into the beaver song. I want you guys to bring your arm. We're, we're, we're talking about the biggest rodent in our country, beavers. Beavers, on average, are uh, around here in Ohio. They get to be about 40 pounds, 35, 40 pounds. Now, out west, they can get to be 50, 60, 70 pounds, bigger than some of you guys. And they have big flat tails. They have big buck teeth. And that's what this song's about. Here, we can't see you over there. You have to come stand between me and the drop. There we go. Look at us. Watch this. Oh, you can't see it too high. That's right. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. It's a sing-along song. I'm going to sing Flat Tail. And right after I sing it, I want you guys to sing it right back to me. Hence the name Sing-Along. Here we go. Let's try it. Ready? Flat Tail. Flat Tail. That was very good. But you, dude, get get your arms. I know. I see you putting your head down on your on your, on your your table. Get, get, get up. Get those arms. Bring your arms up. Make a big beaver's flat tail. Make that flat tail. You guys sing Flat Tail. Flat tail. Now big buck teeth. Big buck teeth. Wait, wait, jump in here. You gotta, you gotta do this. Too. Come on, come on. You can, cause you can sing. See, here we go. Let's try it again. Here we go. Ready? Flat tail. Flat tail. Big buck teeth. Big buck teeth. teeth. Swimming in the water. Swimming in the water. Chewing on trees. Chewing on trees. Building a dam. Building a dam. You know what I am. You know what I am. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. Beaver, beaver, beaver. Beaver. You guys do that well. All right, here we go. Ready? Tails up. Let's sing it. Flat tail. Flat tail. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not, no, it's not working. All right, that classroom over to the right. You guys, I need to hear you a little louder. Let's try it again. Here we go. Ready? Flat tail. Flat tail. Big buck teeth. Big buck teeth. Swimming in the water. Swimming in the water. Chewing on trees. Chewing on trees. Building a dam. Building a dam. You know what I am. You know what I am. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. Nice, nice dance in there, Willie. <laughs> My body's designed for life in the water. I've got built-in ears and nose plugs to keep water from seeping in. Nictitating membranes. Everybody, everybody say nictitating. Nictitating. Membrane. Membrane. All right, put it all together. Nictitating membrane. Nictitating membranes. Actually, you're right. See, you're doing plural. That's what a chemist does. They're like, let's make us technical. You're right. Beavers have this extra pair of eyelids. Now, a lot of animals have them. Owls, alligators, and Willie. You, you, have, Willie. you actually have it. Yes. <laughs> Willie has them as well. It's all about Willie right now. So, and, and, and like Willie's tell you, beavers use them as, as goggles. When they dive underwater, they close their eyelids to protect their eyes. But unlike our other eyelids, they can see through them. They're like underwater goggles helping me to see clear while I swim. Tails up, let's sing it. Flat tail, flat tail. Big buck teeth, big buck teeth. Swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Chewing on trees, chewing on trees. Building a dam, building a dam. You know what I am? I'm a beaver, I'm a beaver, I'm a beaver. I have slippery fur and a waterproof coat. My castorium gland, everybody say castor gland. Yeah, you guys like ice cream? Yes. Yeah, you know, yes, uh, yes. You guys like ice cream? Yeah, well then you're gonna want to know this. Beaver, you're 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 really you're really gonna want to know this. Yeah. Beavers have a gland around their behind called their castor gland. And in that gland is a stinky oil called castorium oil. Doesn't stink too much to water droplets because they don't have noses, obviously. But for the rest of us, it doesn't. Now, but beavers use this as, as basically a marker. They use it to say, this is mine. How many of you guys have brothers and sisters? Yeah, a couple of, yeah, yeah, keep it in the family. That's right. How many of you have things you do not want your brother or sister to touch you? Tell them, this is mine. Well, beavers do the same thing. Well, yeah, well, you've got tons of them, right? And then they all condense together, and it's just, it's a party. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Look, beavers use it to say, this is mine. They'll go up to a tree, and they'll go, this is mine. Yeah, they go up to their home, their lodge, and they'll go, that's mine. They go up to their dam and say, that's mine, too. But we use this oil as well. We take the stinky oil from the backside of the beaver and we use it as a flavor enhancer in your ice cream. 
That's right. Think about that when you have a chocolate soft serve. Ah. It's true. What? That is true. Katie doesn't know what to think about it. But, uh, oh, and if you're a health nut, they use it as a raspberry and a strawberry flavoring, too. So you go to the store, you buy something that has a raspberry flavor, says all natural. <laughs> there you go. Basically. Oh, if it grosses you out, kosher ice cream does not have it. Edie's brand and some of the others. Right. I, I've yet to make an ice cream that I don't like. It makes me smell the way I am. I have special combing claws on my hind feet. So my fur will stay well groomed. And waterproof while I swim. Tails up, sing it. Flat tail. Flat tail. Hey, buck teeth. Hey, buck teeth. Swimming in the water. Swimming in the water. Chewing on trees. Chewing on trees. Building a dam. Building a dam. You know what I am? You know what I am. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. Now my four front teeth, they never stop growing. So to keep them just the right size, I gotta keep chewing and chewing. My teeth are bright orange and extremely tough. That's because of all the iron in the food. I love to eat up. Sing it, fly tail, big front teeth, swimming in the water, chewing on trees, building a dam. You know what I am? I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. I'm a beaver. I slap my big flat tail when danger's around. So I slap them. <laughs> we were just waiting for that part. We're not even sure where to go with that. Yes. When droplets go crazy. I slap my big flat tail when danger's around. So I slap those hands, make them clap. That imitates my sound. Warns all of the beavers around the pot. Before that slap, you. <laughs> Willie's like, listen, I can't get my arms around. <laughs> I slap, you might see me, but after it, I'm gone. Tails up, sing it. Flat tail, flat tail. Hey, buck teeth. Hey, buck Swimming in the water. water. Chewing on trees. Chewing on trees. Building a dam. You know what I am. You know what I am. I'm a hairy. But beaver, but beaver, but beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Up for you guys, up our helpers, and Willie, and oh my gosh, it's just, it's going crazy. All right. Well, we'll do, let's see. Oh, you know what? I have my otter shirt. My, my wonderful wife bought me an otter shirt. So if I have to wear stuff, at least I have animals on it, which is so cool. And I will tell you, otters and beavers they don't get along too well. For one, one of the reasons are, what did we say? What do beavers build? Dams. Wow, you guys are good. You're like right here in the backyard. I like it. Not record time, but we'll take it. That's right. Beavers build dams. Otters will break down parts of the dam sometimes so they can drain the water, make it easier to catch fish. Otters will sneak up and bite the tails of beavers. Sometimes they get a little on, on rear. That looks really creepy because all you see is one eye uh, sticking out here. Yeah, so scooch over this way, Willie. There you go. <laughs> I think I saw that monster movie. One of those nights, yes. It's the one eye of the wheelie monster. That's right. But the thing is, these otters, even though they, they get into scraps with the beavers, I, I still love them. So we're going to do a song about otters. I'm an ornery river otter. I got short legs. I got webbed feet. My tail works just like a rudder. My body's long, my body's sleek. I like to slide on my belly into the water below. I swim real fast in that water. Skin flaps cover my ears and my nose. Now, I need you to help me out. I need you to make your arm and utter arm. Everybody go, utter arm! I have to hear you say it too. Let me hear you guys say it. Come on, real loud. Let's do it. Ready? Otter arm. Otter arm. Make your otter arm slide down the bank and glide in the water. Try. Slide down the bank and glide in the water. Now, catch that fish. Make some big old fish gills. Ready? Catch that fish like it's no bother. The otter way is to play all day. What do you say? When I say what do you say, you shout, it's great to be an otter. Let me hear you try. Ready? It's, it's great, great to be an otter. otter. Be an otter. Be an ornery river otter. I'm an ornery river otter. I don't like beavers. They don't like me. Because I sneak upon them in that water. I bite their tails and I flee. <laughs> 
I like taking over their lodges. I like to dig holes in their dam. Cause it drains down a whole lot of water. That makes it easier for me to catch those fishes. Bring your arm up, say otter arm. Make it slide, here we go. Slide down the bank and I glide in water. I catch that fish like it's no bother. The otter way is to play all day. Come on, what do you say? It's great to be an otter. What do you say? It's great to be an otter. I just want to do that, see that. I got short legs, I got webbed feet. My tail works a whole lot like a boat runner. My body's long, my body's sleek. I like to slide on my belly into that cold water below. I swim real fast in that water. Skin flaps cover my ears and my nose. Drake, touch your nose if you have a nose. Feel bad for Willie. Willie, there's nothing there. You can just keep touching all the way, but it's gone. Here we go. Bring your other arm up. Make it slide. Slide down the bank and I cut in water. I catch that fish like it's no bother. The other way is to play all day. All right, come on. What do you say? It's great to be an otter. What do you say? It's great to be an otter. Very good. Clap for yourselves. Let's hear for Willie. <laughs> you don't get out much, do you, Willie? Uh, we got we to let these water things go. On. Well, you know what? We do have to protect our water. And one of the best ways to <laughs> do that is, uh, well, one of the best ways is to give Willie a break because Willie's like, I can't move around like this as a water droplet forever. But we're going to talk about wetlands. Wetlands are swampy, marshy, boggy areas. And wetlands, now wetlands do a lot of things. One of the things, as you guys know right now, after all the rains that we've had, wetlands act like sponges and they absorb a lot of extra water and they stop flooding from happening. The other thing is wetlands act like filters. They will purify the water. Because what happens is, you know, people are driving along and, and oil might drip out of their car. There might be a gas leak or something. And, and all these things get into the water and it, that gets into a wetland. Wetlands can filter out a lot of these impurities as well as other stuff from the rivers. And as it comes out the other side of the wetland can be much, much cleaner. Uh, of course, if it goes through enough wetlands, it can be pretty much crystal clear. Uh, so the problem is we have covered over a lot of our wetlands to build highways and malls and all kinds of stuff. So we need to protect the wetlands that we have today. And uh, what, like I said though, wetlands are not always wet. Uh, during the summertime, those wetlands might dry out uh, as they release their water to the ground and give all the other plants the water they need when they can't get it during those dry months. So sometimes they're sort of an in-between place. Here's what we're gonna do. I wanna see who can be louder, guys or girls. So what we're going to do, I'm going to split my groups up here. So guys, I'm going to sing that in between place. And right after I sing it, I want all you guys out there to sing it right back to me. Here we go. Ready? That in between place. That was, that was really weird. We, yeah, that was a weak, weak sound. Yeah, yeah, here, come stand over here. Come, come yeah, get, get over here. Yeah. Now it's a competition. Now, yes, yeah. now, now, now we got the party going. That's right. Get it. All right, we're going to see what happens here. Here we go. Ready? Guys. Yeah, yeah. Don't let them down. Here we go. Let's try it again. Ready? That in between place. That in between place. That's pretty good. It was getting a little better. All right, ladies, here we go. Ready? Transitional phase. Transitional phase. Wow, and see, you even got the dancing. Yeah. Thing. She's already up. Step it up. You guys got it. All right. Between the water and the land, it's a wetland. Teachers, never fear. I have not left you out of this. Teachers, you get to go, ooh, 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 wetland. Katie, you gotta, you, you gotta be a teacher on this. All right, go ahead, do it. Ooh, There we go, that's right. Whether a pond or a swamp, bog or marsh, from the mud flat to the sand bar. Now, wetlands act like a sponge, hold the water in, release it, gradually prolong the duration of the rivers. During drier times, when there's too much rain, wetlands slow 
flood waters and they felt that river state bow lines. All right, guys, ready? That in between place. That in between place. Transitional phase. Transitional phase. Between the water and the land, it's a wetland. Teachers, ooh, wetland. Whether it's a pond or swamp, bog or marsh, from the mud flat to the sandbars. Now, wetlands act like kidneys filter around bad junk, natural water treatment from pollution, and play a major role in that erosion control. Wetlands are habitats for animals and plants. There's so much a wetland holds. All right, got to step it up this time. You guys got to bring that, bring that whole game to me because you do not want to be walking down the hall hearing, we were louder, we were louder, we were louder. It's going to drive you crazy when your teachers tell you that. Here we go, ready? Guys, that in between place. That in between place. Transitional phase. Transitional phase. Between the water and the land is a wetland. Teachers, ooh, wetland. Just like silk. Whether it's a pond or a swamp, bog or marsh, from the mud flat to the sand bar. Now sing. We need those wetlands. Everyone. We need those wet One more time. We need those wet Very good. Clap for yourselves. Good job. That's what we did. That was just too good. So many different. Oh, you know what? I want to talk about all the because we don't think about the fact that all of our water. It's it's not just about the animals that live right around the water. Like oh, we have one right here. What animal is that? A dog. It's a what? A duck! It is a duck. Yeah, have you ever seen ducks fly? I love ducks. I love the water. Have you ever known a duck to fly upside down? Yeah, they really can't. Because if a duck flew upside down, it would it would quack up. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Every dad out there is writing that one down. I'm going to take that home with me. Uh, sorry. You know what's brown and sticky? A stick. Best second grade joke ever. Uh, sorry. Anyway, back, back to our ducks, though. I, love I was out at, at dinner with my wife the other day, and uh, there were some ducks at the table next to us. It was amazing. Yeah, and, and at the end of the, the meal, the waiter said, uh, you know, should I, you know, bring you a check? And the duck said, eh, just put it on my bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, this is mallard duck. Mallard ducks are dabbling ducks. Uh, and dabblers, one of the cool things about dabbling ducks are when they feed, basically, they will stick their head down in the water and butts up in the air, which is just an awesome, fun thing to see. Especially if you're a duck. That's right. So this is a sing-along song. Another one. I know, you're like, oh. but somebody's got to sing, because by this time, I'm pretty much exhausted. This is my job now. So I'm going to sing, Sodom's up, and right after I sing it, you guys sing it right back to me, hence the name sing along. Here we go. Ready? Bottoms up. Bottoms up. It's time to feed. Time to feed. Tails in the air. Tails in the air. Heads down deep. Heads down deep. You know you found a dabbling duck when their head's underwater and their bottoms up. Dabbling duck, mallard teals, gadwalls and shovelers, widgeons and pintails go topsy-turvy in the water. Tipping up their back end while the front's down in the drink. This feeding Behavior makes these waterfowl distinct. Willie, get in here, show them how to do it. This is just going to be the funnest thing you guys are going to see all day. Make sure this goes viral. Here we go. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Time to feed. Time to feed. Tails in the air. Tails in the air. Heads down deep. Heads down deep. You know you found a dabbling duck when their head's underwater and their bottoms up. <laughs> They eat lots of aquatic plants on and underwater. As they use their filaments, their bodies teeter totter. Tipping up those back end while their fronts down in the drink. This feeding behavior makes these water found the stains. Bottoms up! Bottoms up. It's time to, time to feed! Tails in the air! Heads down deep! You know you found a dabbling duck when their head's underwater and their bottoms up. When dabbling ducks are feeding, they have a certain savoir faire. Ooh la la! That's my that's my uh, you know, bridge in the international gap there. That's right. Everybody get babble. That's right. It's always fun seeing those little ducky dairy ears. Bottoms up! Bottoms up! 
Tails in the air. Tails in the air. Heads down deep. Heads down deep. You know you found a dabbling duck. When their heads up in water and their bottoms up. One more time, bottoms up. Bottoms up. It's time to feed. Time to feed. Tails in the air. Heads down deep. You know you found a dabbling duck. When their heads under water and their bottoms up. When their heads under water and their bottoms up. <laughs> that was the best duck song we've ever done. I hope you guys were even half the duck that Willie was. That's all we can say. You know. But like I said, not all of the animals that depend on water are going to be right around the water. One of my favorites of all time is the skunk. And I look now I know, I know, I can already hear you guys from you know all the schools out there, eh, but skunk, you, you don't know what you know, if you want to know a secret, skunks do not always stink. And and they don't want to spray you. Everybody, skunk. I just wanted to do that just so Eric, Eric's like carefully doing something. He's like, shh, don't try to be quiet. Yeah, no, the sk skunks don't always say, skunks, look at this. Skunks only have three teaspoons of stinky stuff in their bodies. When you go home, ask mom or dad to show you a teaspoon. You're going to see a teaspoon is really small. And how many teaspoons of stinky stuff do they have? Um, <laughs> Katie's going like this many? Yeah, that's right, three. Three teaspoons. You, 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 can, you can talk this. Yeah. Three teaspoons. Now, with those three teaspoons, they can squirt about six squirts. And now they're pretty good aims. They can get you from about 15 feet away. But once they squirt those six squirts, it, it takes them almost two weeks to make new stuff. So they, they don't want to spray you unless they have to. And, and most people don't get sprayed. Do you know who gets sprayed a lot? Not people. Dogs. Dogs, dogs. dogs. Yeah, dogs, because dogs don't get the hint. And they, I mean, we see a skunk, we think danger. Yeah, it's true. Dogs see a skunk and, and they think, Jew toy! Yeah. I wrote this song for my dear departed boomer. He was my 125 pounds of slobbering golden retriever. And Boomer found out so many times about skunks. So this is his song. Scuttling along on those furry little legs. Searching for grasshoppers, berries, birds, and eggs. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you. But if you bend them in a corner, this is what they'll do. They'll raise that tail at you. Now, like I said, they don't want to spray you because how many teaspoons of stinky stuff do they have? Three. With, with those three teaspoons, how many squirts can they squirt? Six. Yeah. Well, once they squirt those six squirts, how long does it take them to make new stuff? Two weeks. Yeah, well, you guys are good. Look at the gold stars for everybody. So they're going to warn you. First thing they're going to do is growl and click their teeth. When I say growl and click their teeth, you guys go, grr. Ready? Growl and click their teeth. Grr. That's a good point. You got Eric, you got Eric. Katie, you got to yeah, get, get all of you guys. No, no, come come up here. You can you can move away from that for a oh, fine. She's, she's the boss. She's been doing this all week behind the scenes. And she's like, and I'm still going to be behind the scenes. Which means you guys have to come back up because, yeah, come on. Willie, get back up here! <laughs> What's it like living with a water droplet? Great. Yeah. Take care. We all do. Much of a drip? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. When they get upset, like if, you're, if you guys are ever watching like a, a serious movie, and, and gets all, you know, emotional. Where do, do, do droplets and everything just like, maybe droplets everywhere? It's just like, oh, it's like, oh God, this is gonna finish you. I can't even say anything again. Dad! Yeah, here you go. Okay, this is our skunk song. Scuttling along on those furry little legs. Searching for grasshoppers, berries, birds, and eggs. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you. But if you pick them in a corner, this is what they'll do. They'll raise that tail at you. Now, like I said, they don't want to spray you, so they're going to warn you. First thing they're going to do is growl and click their teeth. When I say growl and click their teeth, you guys go, grr. Ready? Grr. Give, give me a grr. Okay, there we go. This is a good girl. Then they're going to stomp their feet. Let me see you stomp those feet. Now, technically, technically, skunks would stomp their front little paws, but I mean, you guys are bipedal, and so we'll give you a break. And if you're dumb enough to stay, bring your arm up. 
Lift that tail and spray. Let me see, Jerry. Lift that tail and spray. And yeah, just, wouldn't it be cool? Instead, of, if you saw a skunk and all of a sudden they came up and they lifted their tail and you're like, ah! And instead of stinky stuff, they just went, poof, glitter. I don't know. It was just, uh, it was sort of, yeah, I, I, I digress. Growl and click those teeth. Grrr. Then they stomp their feet. You're dumb enough to stay. They lift that tail and spray. This part because this is the part of the song, young people, where I'm going to sing Pee And right after I sing Pee you get to point back at me and say, You stink. How cool is that? I mean, come on, fess up. How, how many teachers have been wanting to say it since I started? Yeah, so you know, here we go. Ready? I know, I hear like, oh, I've been for a long time here. Yeah, here we go. Pee Wee, you stink. Hey, no, it's not, no, it's yeah, young people, look, you know, you know, you need motivation. You know, imagine I were going to sing for another like three hours. Yeah, here we go. Pewee! Hey, see, motivation works every time. Pewee! Skunks have six shots they can spray. Pewee! You say! Pewee! You say! Spray from 15 feet away. Skunks have two cent glands at the base of their tail. Hold three teaspoons of musk that have a really nasty smell. That stinky six shooter fills a skunk with confidence. But before he shoots, he warns you in case you're real dense. In case you ain't got no sense. Here we go, ready? They growl and click their teeth. Then they stomp their feet. You're dumb enough to stay. Bring your arm up, put that tail and spray. Growl and click those teeth. Yeah, you sound more like a pirate. You're like, you're more, you're more like, Arr, Arr. You know why the little pirate couldn't go to the movie? Because <laughs> it was rated R. That's right. Ooh, he started. If you weren't Arr, you know, anyway, I wouldn't have gone there. Here we go. Growl and click those teeth. Arr. And they stomp their feet. You're dumb enough to stay. Bring your arms up, pull that tail and spray. Growl and click those teeth. Arr. And they stomp their feet. You're dumb enough to stay. They lift that tail and spray. Guns have six shots they can spray. Pee-wee, you say. Pee-wee, you say. Spray from 15 feet away. Skunks are in the weasel family. They all have glands that spray stinky musk. They use to mark their scuff. But skunks use the musk to say back off. Skunks lay along the arms and fire back off. Arr. Stay away from my gun. Scuttling along on those furry little legs, searching for grasshoppers, berries, birds, and eggs. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you. But if you pick them in a corner, this is what they'll do. They'll raise that tail at you. Show them, Willie. There you go. Here we go. Growl and click those teeth. And they stomp their feet. You're dumb enough to stay. Bring your arm up, lift that tail and spray. Growl and click those teeth. Yeah, see, you're, you're, you're like, yeah, yeah. Then they stomp their feet. You're dumb enough to stay. They lift that tail and spray. Are you guys? Give it to us both barrels. Here we go. Ready? Pee-wee! Pee-wee! Skunks have six shots they can spray. Pee-wee! You stink! Pee-wee! You stink! Yeah, well, right back at you. So there. Uh, spray it from 15 feet away. Good job, clever as else. That's here for our minions here. Oh, so many animals. Oh, I just love it. We do love skunks. They're just, we have a skunk in our backyard. Just come, do, 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 and they get uh, these little talents. So cute. Many different animals. The problem, though, like I said, so many of these depend on clean water. And we have to do what we can to take care of our water. Because we all live on the same planet. At least most of us like to think so. And we have to do what we can to take care of that water. Not just for ourselves, but for animals like, uh, what's this? Bald eagle. Ah, uh, you're so good. How'd you know it's a bald eagle? No hair. Oh, no, see? Well, I'm not gonna say, that'd be me, I'm a bald eagle. Now, and you know what? And that's what most people think. Most people think bald eagle because bald like me. But uh, actually, you know, the reason it's called the bald eagle, it does have to do with the head, but it's because of what color is the head? White. White, that's right. See, you're right on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Eric's like taking a little time on that. Oh, Lord.
and later on. Now, a long time ago, when the early Europeans came over and explored and they saw this beautiful eagle, they saw this gorgeous eagle with this white head. The old English word for white was bald. So they saw the eagle and they, they basically called it the bald eagle for, for the white headed eagle. This eagle was extremely rare many, 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 many years ago. We were having problems here in Ohio. There were just a few nesting pairs of eagles. Uh, back in the 70s, there were only about four or five, I believe it was. It was extremely rare. Now we have over 700 bald eagles uh, soaring through our skies, and uh, we have to do what we can to take care of yours. I want you to help me out. One more sing along, and then I'm going to do a mellow one. I'll cool us down. I'll do our namaste stuff. This is about our wonderful bald eagle. And bald eagles are incredible. They are birds of prey. They have incredible eyesight. They can see, as they're soaring in the sky, they could see a, a rabbit from a mile away. Extremely good eyes. So I'm going to sing, I'm an eagle. I'm a bird of prey. I'm, I'm gonna, I want you to bring your arms up. You guys say, I can see that prey from a mile away. Oh, by the way, you see what I'm doing here? If you look at a bald eagle's eye, they look grumpy. A lot of birds of prey, everybody says, well, they look mean, they look grumpy. But the reason for that is actually because of the bone that sticks out over their eye. It blocks the sunlight from glittering in, just like my handy dandy fucking beaver hat. Uh, that's right. This blocks the sun. My wife bought me this cool hat. She, she buys me all kinds of great stuff. She buys me, you know, I mean, otter shirts, beaver hats, you know, buy, buy my guitar, you know, she buys some shoes. I love my wife. She's a great lady. Yeah, you, you should see her. And, uh, but anyway, this hat blocks the sun. That's the same thing that the bone does around those birds of prey, which gives them sort of that grumpy look. Here we go. Ready? I'm an eagle. I'm a bird of prey. Bring your arm up. I can see that prey from a mile away. I got sharp talons on my feet. Of course, they have strong talons, really sharp. I've got big wings. Eagles have a wingspan much bigger than my fingers here. Eagles have a wingspan of about eight feet. From the tip of my finger over here to the tip of my fingers over here, it's about six feet. So you add another couple of feet to that. So I got, yes, right. Big wings and a strong beak. They have to have a strong hooked beak so that they can catch their food and rip it apart and eat it. I know, it's like, yeah, oh, but hey, they gotta eat. I'm a predator, I hunt to eat. I'm a bird of prey. Well, I'm bald, but, actually I am bald, but yeah. Not the way you're thinking of bald. It's an old English word that means white. I'm a diurnal bird of prey. A hunter in the day and asleep at night. I'm an eagle, I'm a bird of prey. I can see that prey from a mile away. I got sharp talons on my feet. I got big wings and a strong beak. I'm a predator, I hunt to eat. I'm a bird of prey. I build a big nest and I add to it every year. Twig by twig by twig. Some eagle nests get to be over 2,000 pounds. That's pretty big. An eagle's nest, after they build on it years upon years, can get to be bigger than a small pickup truck. That's right. I'm an eagle. I'm a bird of prey. I can see that prey from a mile away. I got sharp talons on my feet. I got big wings and a strong beak. I'm a predator. I hunt to eat. I'm a bird. bad pesticides were killing off the friends I had but times have changed the people have learned and the bald eagles have returned I'm an eagle I'm a bird of prey I can see that prey from a mile away I got sharp talons on my feet I got big wings and a strong beak I'm a predator I hunt to eat I'm a bird of prey I'm a Squeeze one. Oh, good. Oh, good. Because I actually, as we were talking, my mind, my mind wanders all the time. I'm basically like the dog from Up. I can be walking and it's like squirrel. And uh, actually, there's a squirrel. Oh, look at that squirrel. Uh, you can't see it, but I can. That's uh, right. There's so many things up here I'm seeing. That's uh, right. But anyway, I'm going to talk about an animal that's not around here, 
but it is an animal that depends on our waters so much. Uh, it's an animal that lives down in Florida and some of our other southern states. It is an alligator. I love alligators, and I'm going to go see my friends at the Beardsley Zoo in a couple weeks. And I, 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 I got to do this song because I wrote this song for some of my friends at the zoo uh, about alligators because one of our friends uh, uh, had a little nibble from an alligator, and he was okay. You know, just got his finger a little bit. He, he was he was fine. He didn't didn't have to go to the second hand shop. But uh, yeah. so this is a song about alligators, and you guys get to help on this. Alligator swimming in the body you look like a log. Yeah, you really do. But under the water, big sharp teeth that I don't want to get close to. All right, this is a sing along. I need my minions. Get up here, Willie. Bring your cohorts. Because they know you're going to have to do something like that. That's right. I want you to sing this. You're going to sing, Look out, little duck. Look, Look out, out, little, little duck. duck. Bring your arms and make ducklings. Make ducklings. Yeah. Yeah. Just, this is just so we can see the water drop. Let's do our thing. Here we go. Look out, little duck. Look, Look out, out, little, little duck. duck. Look out, little trout. Look out, little trout. Don't get too close. Don't, Don't get too close. To the alligator's mouth. To the alligator's now, mouth. When you do an alligator, only the top teeth are showing. If you've got top and bottom teeth showing, now you are staring down a crocodile. See, alligators and cro you know, see, it makes me really nervous at the time. Yeah, you know, we're gonna lose water here in a minute. That's right. Alligators and crocodiles, even though they're all in the same family, the crocodilians, they're, they're created a little different. Crocodiles have a more triangular pointed snout. And when a crocodile closes its mouth, you can see top and bottom teeth. Alligators that have more of a broad round snout, alligators, when they close their mouth, you just see the top teeth. So just show me the top teeth. Just, just top teeth. There we go. That's right. That's what Willie's like. Willie's thinking about it. Like, hey. What about, yeah, what about uh, Cayman? You know the best thing about you? <laughs> you make me look normal. Uh, that's right. Yes. Yes. Gosh. We got to bring the Cayman in. Always the Cayman. See, the Cayman, the Cayman is like that, that extra stepchild. Like, what about me? What about me? I know. So, yeah. <sighs> I digress, but you stumped me for a second there. I was like, ah, what should I say about You're that? You're welcome. I, I thank you. I appreciate that. Here we go. Back to the ducks. Look out, little duck. Look out, little duck. Look out, little trout. Look out, little trout. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. To the alligator's mouth. To the alligator's now, mouth. Put your hand on your belly. Say when he's hungry. When he's hungry. Everybody shout. Danger's about. Danger's about! Come on, you guys, this is your chance to be loud at school. Let me hear it. Danger's about! Danger's, Danger's about! about. Do, you know why? You know why? He's gonna eat you up and poop you out. Just your eyes and nose sticking out of the water as they float about with their powerful jaws and snaggle to grin. They'll chomp, chomp, chomp on a limb or a fin. Alligators swimming in a bayou. Look like a log, yeah, you really do. But under the water are big, sharp teeth. I don't want to get close to duck wings. Get them up, quack, quack. Look out, little duck. Look out, little duck. Look out, little trout. Look out, little trout. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. To the alligator's mouth. Hands on the belly. When he's hungry. Shout it out, danger's about, danger's about, he's gonna eat you up and poop you out. Alligators got a broad round snout when they close their mouth, their upper teeth hang out. Armor plated, scaly skin, makes them one tough crocodilian, but their population had declined. For years they'd fallen on hard times, you see, even tough alligators find it hard when people are unkind. Alligator, swimming in a bayou, you look like a mole, yeah, you really do, but under the water are big sharp teeth, I don't want to get close to duck wings, get up, my back. look out, little duck, look out, little duck, look out, little trout, look out, little trout, don't get too close. Don't get too close. To the alligator's mouth. Hands on your belly. When he's hungry. Shout it out. Danger's about. Danger's about. Come on, last time, guys. Let me hear it. Let me get some drama. Come on. Danger's about. Danger's about. Why? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's going to eat you up and what? And poop you out. That's right. 
Very good. Take that, you guys. Clap for yourselves. Those are your words, not mine. Many animals, we've only had a chance to stretch the surface today. But one of the big things we have to do, you guys, is we have to preserve our water. We have to take care of what we have. We have precious water. And we're the only, only planet in the world. Um, let's try that again. We're the only planet in the world that we know that we can live on. And yeah, not just the world, but the universe, I guess. We could go there. Right? And, yeah. It's like when they say universal and you see the globe there. It's like, doesn't, doesn't the fact that universal tie in with that world? But anyway, yeah, the only planet we know of in our whole universe, our solar system, our galaxy, our universe, that we know of that can support life. And we have to do what we can to take care of our planet. Because we all live on the same planet. At least most of us like to think so. And uh, yeah, there are, there are others. We have to do what we can to take care of what we got. We've only one island Earth to live on. Tilts on its axis as we go around the sun. Take a trip through outer space. You won't even have to leave your place. Hang on. Hang on. So precious a gift. And given us a silver blue jewel is what we live on. Take care of this land, take care of the seas, take care of the skies, and take care of these. Hang on, hang on. We all need a chance to understand. Please. about what you have learned with our water festival. You are now the water ambassadors. It is up to you to go forth like Willie and spread the word. Teach mom and dad, your grandmas and grandpas, your uncles and aunts, even your annoying brother or sister, uh, what they need to do to take care of our precious water. And with that, thank you guys so much. And thanks for all of, all of our staff who makes this half happen and I know you're coming back up to take care of things and she's actually coming up to kick me out so no. thank you guys no it's, it's okay yeah I know it's, 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 there I go I gotta go find my kingdom that's right bye guys thank you so much Chris. you're welcome and thank you Willie and thank you Eric and thank you Katie for running the show behind the scenes we could not bring any of this to you without all of the committee and everyone's hard work Thank you for coming and participating and being a part of our celebration. And I hope everyone had fun with the wonderful sing-alongs. I know I did. I know you're welcome to steal any of my sweet dance moves. That was working. And the air guitar. You had, some, you had some serious air. I was actually going to let you do a solo with the air guitar. Thank you. I mean, I play a mean, do. I don't, is this bass? I don't know. Just, All right. Yeah. Well, now let's talk about the festival challenge winners. Thank you everyone for participating and I am very excited to announce Drum roll, anybody, anybody? <laughs> All right, from the classroom leaderboard, we have Amy Lokai's class from Prass Elementary. <laughs> they participated in 20 activities and videos. Thank you guys, great work. Thank you guys. Next up, we have the Follow the Water Stormwater Scavenger Hunt. And this school will win Stormwater Swag Bag Swag. and Ice Pops. And from Ruskin Elementary School, we had three classes participate and win. Yay! I love school! Congratulations, Ruskin. Way Ruskin swag! And then there is No Away Recycling Challenge. This class will win tickets to the Boonshock Museum of Discovery, where we are reporting live from right now, one of my favorite places in Dayton. And world. where is Greenmont Elementary? Woo! Miss Kelly's class. Nice color too. Great. Woo! Great work, everybody. Great work. Fantastic work. 
And thank you all for being here. And like we've said many times, we hope to be with you in person next year, but we really appreciate everyone participating virtually and still being a part of this year's Children's Water Festival. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Come on, everybody in. Oh, Bye. Bye. Get in Bye. Bye. See you. Ooh, there goes the guitar. Bye. Bye. Bye, Steve. See you guys. Hey, I can see my house.